All right, so we wanted to talk just a little bit. We don't have a presentation for this. This might be more of a conversational uh, time here where we talk about protective, protective custody animals and their options for foster care and housing during the pendency of the trial. I know Emily's been working with you guys in the DA's office on a couple of cases in particular where the animals have been in custody, in protective custody, for a long period of time. The case uh, that we had a few years ago involving these Akita dogs that I told you about, the two on the left, uh, we had over 100 Akitas, and many of them were in our care for almost two years. Over two years? About two years. Um, throughout that time, we worked hard to get uh, forfeiture, we worked hard to get uh, surrender, voluntary surrender by the owner. We went to mediation with uh, some counsel on that, and we worked with the owner's uh, uh, attorney to actually some degree of success because we got to the point where we had a binder with a photograph of every animal that we took off the property, and with the help of the judge and the uh, defendant's attorney, we went through animal by animal by photo and actually got her to uh, surrender a portion of the animals. She was very uh, committed to the idea that she was a stellar breeder and a progenitor of this line of Akita dogs straight from Japan. And so there was a fraction of that population that she felt uh, represented her bloodline and she was not interested in signing those over, but with our <laughs> a little bit of tenacity and, and uh, kept going back, back and whittling away, we were able to get some of those other animals surrendered and moved on through rehabilitation and adoption. Um, when animals are seized, is it under a search warrant or there is a, uh, uh, the, the seizing facility has the ability to charge a daily fee for their care and housing. And one of the things that we do when we seize animals is explain that right away to the owner if they're amenable to talking to us, to actually show them the verbiage that allows us to charge a daily cost of care, and then to provide them with the opportunity to surrender the animals in order for that uh, daily rate not to accrue. So we do a little bit of education in that way uh, and feel that in the long run it serves us better if the animals can be surrendered uh, right away. And it's a, a good um, tactic to use or our officers will tell them it's not you deciding to sign them over or not at this point doesn't really weigh on your innocence or guilt as far as the crime is concerned. It's really in the best interest for your animals right now to allow them to be able to not, for us not to have to hold them. Um, explain it to them in the context of the welfare of their animals can be helpful too. Yeah. Uh, if that, if that, if we're unsuccessful at getting surrender of the animals at that time, then we will evaluate them for their appropriateness to be placed into foster care. Um, any animals that are ill or injured under hospitalization, Feral cats or, or wild type animals, animals who are constantly trying to bite or escape, those are not good candidates for the foster program. It's too risky that they will dash off or become lost or hurt someone or somehow uh, be compromised as evidence. But dogs that are well socialized, cats that don't mind being indoors, uh, things that don't jump over fences or climb walls, uh, can often benefit from a stay in foster care while they're waiting for their uh, time in court. We have put together a special foster care contractor agreement which we shared with the county here for approval and it includes some of the uh, conditions by which these animals need to be kept that's different from just a, a traditional foster uh, placement for animals that might be too young or too sick to be adopted. Those things include um, no uh, photo photos of the animals or things posted to social media, no showing or breeding or 
uh, talking about the case, not leaving the animals outside unattended or without proper enclosure, and for our livestock then, you know, to, to only allow the listed handlers to be the primary caregivers of the animals. And we've included uh, all of the verbiage from our foster care agreement on the CD that we gave. Um, do you guys have any questions about that? Uh, before having seen any of it. It's become a really good way for us to um, get the animals into homes even though they're not released by the courts. And it's worked well for us. <laughs>